I make music to convey all of the wild thoughts going on in my head. Some of my earliest musical memories were I used to write poems. Before I had learned to play guitar or piano, I would just get my tape cassette out and I'd like a, a little karaoke machine and I would just sing melodies in their acapella. I moved to Nashville when I was 20 years old. Didn't have much but a suitcase and a guitar. I didn't even really know how to write a song at that point. I just started going out to all the writer's nights and open mics. I would study what other people were doing that made the audience laugh or, or cry. That for me was a better education than anything I probably would have found in a music school. Oh, success definitely didn't happen overnight. For me, I always joke that I'm a 12-year overnight success. I play predominantly guitar. I started out on piano. Then in my early 20s, I realized I could play the drums. And I do think that being able to play multiple instruments helps with the songwriting craft because when you sit down with the guitar, it's gonna be a very different experience. You're gonna come up with something completely different than if you were at the keys. This is my home kit. It was a Frankenstein kit of many different pieces. My jazz drummer, Aaron Lottis, made it for me by covering a bunch of old drums with actual fur leopard print. This Pearl, um, this Tom's also, also Pearl. This is Tama. It's a little bit of a, um, of a work in progress, but it gets the job done for playing at home. I had a settlement from a car wreck. I was supposed to use the money to get some physical therapy, but I bought a drum kit. There's been songs where Jeremy will have an electric and I'll have a drum kit, little uh, white stripes action. I think there's, there's certain songs, there's you know certain songs that have more intensity. It really does help to write with a drum beat behind it. The thing the drums give me that other instruments don't is a, a release. There's nothing quite like playing loud and just banging out the beat of your heart on a drum kit. This piano I actually just got three days ago on my husband and I's 12-year wedding anniversary. We found it in East Nashville from this guy that had all sorts of different pianos, but it's a Baldwin and it's 1966 is the year it was from, and I think 80s and under they actually used real mahogany. The thing that's different about writing on a piano versus guitar is just how everything is kind of laid out in order. I think with a guitar you have all these different shapes, all these different chords, but really on the piano you can just move your hands up and down it and find what you need a little more easily. I think there's a difference in, in writing on a piano and a guitar. There's been times where I've been writing on a guitar and I couldn't find the right melody and then I sit down at the piano and it just kind of opens itself up. I have to work harder at piano and even though I took lessons on the piano and I'm self-taught on guitar, the piano still has a little bit more mystery to me. This is a Martin guitar. I have signatures of my heroes on here. This is Willie Nelson. This is Chris Christopherson, Lyle Lovett, Emmylou Harris, Jesse Coulter, Bobby Bear, Tanya Tucker in bright pink, and this is Dolly Parton right here. So this is definitely one of my, if the house was burning down, I would come in and save. <laughs> I would have to choose which guitars to save, but this would be, this would be one of them.
So this is my main baby, my guitar. I play all the time. And I keep it in a Carlton case. This is 1965 J45 Cherry Burst Gibson. And I bought it right after I got my advance from Third Man Records. It was um, the first time I ever got to pick out any guitar that I wanted. Um, as soon as I played it, I knew that it was the one. Put quite a bit of wear on it. That's from me. And this is from my belt buckle. <laughs> The song I'm about to play for y'all is the title track and the opening track to my album is called That's How Rumors Get Started. It's kind of a letter that I wrote to a friend that I had been estranged from. After I finished writing it, I realized that it wasn't just to that one friend, but it's to a lot of people in my past lives. Right behind my back, baby, it's how rumors get started. This is the guitar that I wrote, that's how we're going to get started on. And like I said, it starts in G. Nothing too tricky. A minor. F major 7. Real Fleetwood back by on that chord. And then the chorus goes to an F major. D minor. I like it when you can change keys without anybody really noticing. I was talking about Fleetwood Mac before, and obviously the title of this song is a direct nod to their classic album, Rumors. I love Stevie Nicks so much. When I wrote this song, I, I just really wanted to write something that felt like maybe it had been left off of that album. My album, That's How Rumors Get Started, was recorded in Los Angeles at East West Studio, and Sturgill Simpson, David Ferguson, and I produced the album. So I wanted to branch out from traditional country. I really wanted to pull more of like Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Linda Ronstadt, Fleetwood Mac, classic rock and roll. My husband Jeremy Ivy and I wrote the entire album together. It's wild to have both a musical relationship and a family with the same person, but we're both really transparent in what we think about each other's art, and there's not a lot of hurting the other person's feelings. Sometimes a fight can turn into a song lyric, and sometimes a song lyric can turn into a fight. <laughs> I think that's how rumors get started is the best thing I've done yet. And I feel like if you're not moving forward, if you're not pushing yourself to maybe go into territory that makes you a little uncomfortable, you're not growing as an artist. I hope my music inspires others to write truthfully about what's on their mind. I hope I inspire other little girls to pick up the guitar or to play the drums. I hope I inspire people to write songs that are unique and maybe a little outside the box. There's, there's no formula. Loretta Lynn said you have to be either first grade or different. <laughs>